Hi, and welcome to another episode of Quarantine Theater. My name is Brian Kruger, and we try to help you with some of the problems you might be having during these difficult times. Let's go straight to the mail. Today's letter is from Mike Orris from Plymouth, Michigan. I think that's where they make Daisy BB guns. Dear Brian, my wife Jen and I raised three wonderful teenagers. Uh, they all seem pretty well liked at school and at home they have, uh, their rooms are very neat and orderly because they have very good habits. I think because of this, we should relax a bit and let them just be kids. My wife says we should just stay the course because it's worked so far. They have good habits. Signed, Mike. P.S. Don't tell my wife I sent you this. Well, that's sort of out of the bag now, isn't it, Mike? Um, you know what? I've got to agree with your wife on this one. Uh, good habits are important. And to better illustrate this, I went back into the vault and I found a movie that tells the story pretty well. It's about two girls, Barbara and Helen. Let's watch. It's a little late for tears, isn't it, Barbara? Even though you didn't know it was going to happen today, you've still had your whole life to prepare for it. Of course, you've gotten into the habit of not being prepared. And now it's a little late, isn't it? You're a creature of habit, Barbara. We all are. Unfortunately, not all of your habits are good ones. This was how your day started. Started wrong. Your neighbor, Helen, is a creature of habit, too. But she got up when the alarm went off. Because, Barbara, that's what she really had in mind when she said it. Helen has trained herself to know what she's going to do, in what order, and where the things are to do it with. She really doesn't have to think about it. She already knows what clothes she's going to wear today. As it turned out, it was a special day for Helen, too. But she makes a habit of being ready for special days. She starts by having a place for things and keeping them there. She uses taste in selecting her clothes. But more than that, she keeps them clean and mended. And she's able to match the right skirt with the right sweater. This was going to be a special day for you. But you hadn't gotten very far with your preparations for it. Was your whole family asleep? No, your mother was up. Had been for an hour. Barbara! Barbara, get up! You'll be late for school! Does she have to do this every morning, Barbara? Barbara, do you hear me? If your mother stopped acting like a second alarm clock for even one day, you'd probably think it was a dirty... Pete's sake, I hear you! I'm up! You didn't seem at all appreciative. Even if you're not really well-mannered, you could make a habit of being civil. And you weren't really up when your mother called you. Little lies are such a firm foundation for big ones. You started your day with no plan at all. Looking for your hairbrush? Can't remember where you left it? You forgot other important things today. You meant to fix that collar, but you've gotten into the habit of putting things off. There are so many things you plan to do this coming Saturday or the one after that. Let's see. You found the algebra notebook you lost. The ski pants you meant to put away in the chest. The afghan you started to knit last summer. 
And, oh yes, the sweater you were looking for. You decided to cover the spots on your sweater with a scarf. You often do that. But you can't forget that the spots are there. If you had a habit plan for your mornings, you might get off to a decent start someday. So as you can see, we have two very different teenagers. One's pretty neat, the other one not so much. And I think that spot on that sweater is gonna play out in probably some really unfortunate way. Let's see what happens. Helen has a habit plan, and it includes a healthy breakfast and a pleasant word with her parents. All three always enjoyed Mr. Elliot's comments on the news. It was time to get started for office and school. Helen's dad would drop her on the way downtown. And who could ask for a nicer way to go to school? Your brother was ready, but your father couldn't wait for you. Or you could have driven to school with him. He used to enjoy that drive, too. Your eggs were cold this morning, but you had no time to be picky about food or to think about your diet. No time for milk or even to say good morning. No time for manners. You made a pretty picture with your rumpled skirt, your spotted sweater, and your hair in a tizzy. As usual, all your neighbors knew how late it was when you went by at your regular dog trot. First of all, dog trot is a little harsh. Secondly, I do want to point this out. Let's hear it for toasters on the kitchen table in the morning. What happened to that? It's a great place for them. The toast is right there. Anyway, let's see what happens when Barbara and Helen go to school. You were late for school this morning, but then you're almost always late, and you're guilty about it. More so because your lateness is habitual. You're in a rut with a bad habit, and the longer you stick with the habit, the deeper the rut gets. When you saw Helen, you suddenly felt envious, but more than that, you felt a distaste for your sloppy ways. And you knew you could do something about them, if only... That wasn't a happy thought, was it? Or do you always drum with your fingers? You were just chatting away with Helen when it happened when the day suddenly turned into something special. You've never been friends with Ann Tolliver, and you've always wanted to be. Hi. Hi. Some of the crowd's coming over to my house right after school. Do you think you two could make it? Well, that'd be fun, Ann. I'd love to. Swell. Well, what do you say, Bobby? Sure, thanks. Okay, see you later. Bye. That'll be fun, won't it? Oh, yes. Oh, bye. Each school year sees new groups forming, old ones reforming. Yours is a changing social world, and the opportunities to be part of it must be taken when they arise. You knew this afternoon that you were making a bad impression, and you knew how easy it is not to be invited again, and how quickly you can be left out of the crowd. You were embarrassed by your messy hair and the fingernails you had neglected to clean. You worried about the spots on your sweater, Barbara. But what really showed up were your habits. You didn't find it very pleasant comparing yourself with the others. What? I said, what do you think? You weren't listening. 
You seldom do. It's a habit of yours. I, I guess I don't know much about it. They were talking about a popular book. All your friends were interested, but you never got into the habit of reading books. The whole problem was that Claudia wanted to be free to do all the things she'd never been allowed to do. Well, that was her whole reason for leaving her family. And then she married back to the same kind of life. Well, that's why I think the book's stupid. Why couldn't she have seen... No, you added nothing to that conversation. The trouble with me is getting started. I always have to force myself to do new things. I'm the same way. I didn't even want to go to my first concert because I thought it would be too long-haired. Oh, but the music is wonderful. I'm going to go to the whole series. My mother had to drag me to the museum. <laughs> but they have a wonderful costume exhibit there. I know what you're thinking, and I'm thinking it too. Ann Tolliver throws some swell parties. You've never taken an interest in music or politics or art. We, we, we always go to the beach. Every year we take a cottage at Essen. You've only been once. There's wonderful swimming and lots of boys. It's quiet where we go. Sometimes and there are tennis courts at the hotels, too, and, and dances every weekend. It sounds grand. And it's just a short way to the city. You couldn't help interrupting, could you? And you couldn't help stretching truth like a rubber band. We all like to talk about ourselves. But a soliloquy isn't a conversation. First, you didn't talk at all. And then you did all the talking. Conversation is a two-way street. But for you, it's either one way or a dead end. Goodbye. I hope you had a very nice oh, thank time. You. I did. Bye. Bye. See you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Bye. Goodbye, Barbara. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Bye. Thank you. Bye. In all society, at all ages, we know that people are going to talk about other people. Unfortunately, our faults are often more discussed than our good points. And sometimes our good points are completely yeah. hidden by our faults. But perhaps worst of all is our own disappointment in ourselves and the remarks we imagine our friends are making about us. Gee, I think dirty fingernails are horrible. Maybe she felt shy. A spotted sweater isn't shiny. And bad manners are still bad manners no matter what you call them. Now, in your own room, the memory of this day stands between you and your whole pattern of behavior. Where will you start? Your complexion? That starts with soap and water and goes on to regular meals and the right kind of food. Your hair? It's more than just a shampoo when you happen to think of it. Your clothes? Not just cleaned when your mother takes them away from you, but a system of cleaning for all of a pattern, a network of habits. Helen checks her clothes for cleaning when she takes them off. That's a habit of hers. This morning, Helen took her skirt from the front of the closet. Tonight, she hangs it in the back. That's a habit, too. One on the plus side. It gives clothes a chance to hang, rests the fabric. Tonight, Helen makes a plan for tomorrow a what to wear, what to do, when to do it, design for living. Helen has the habit of being ready for special days. Good habits save time and energy and give us greater freedom to do those extra things we want to do. Yes, a good start. But these improvements are not yet habits, not by any means. They must happen again and again until they fit into the fabric of the days without conscious thought. If you try, really try, you can root out the poor accidental habits and establish in their place the good habits approved by custom, accepted by society.
the street, Helen's light goes out. Reasonable hours are part of her pattern. And you, Barbara? Well, you've had a hard day. But staying awake to think about it won't help it any. Go to bed early for a change. Give yourself a good start on a new day. You see, Mike, your kids' habits, well, they're a good thing. So why don't you just stay the course like your wife said? And uh, don't mention to her that maybe the Barbaras are a little bit more popular with the boys at school than the Helens, but we don't want to talk about that part. Anyway, thanks for sending your letter, and we'll see you next time on Quarantine Theater with Brian Kruger. This is the American dream.